Hey guys, welcome back to Preview Alliance Podcast. It's Sarah and Whitney, and we have a special guest today. Yay. We got Emily here with us. Emily Gilmore. She, if you're in Birmingham, you should know about Thrive PT. Okay, she is our go-to for pelvic floor therapy, mm-hmm. and she is with us, and she's going to educate us on pregnancy period today, guys. The first off, I didn't know this. I'll admit this: yeah. what the pelvic floor was. Can you give us a little bit of like what it is and why we need pelvic floor PT? Absolutely. So the pelvic floor is a sling of muscles that sits at the base of our pelvis. Um, It has three, uh, actually four kind of basic functions. We have bladder, bowel, sexual, and lymphatic drainage, and it's also huge in core stability. So it's a sling of muscles. They all attach to our pubis, our sit bones, and our tailbones and kind of serve all those functions. So they make the decision to keep things in and let things out and are also hugely influential with our core. So essentially we have a superficial um, pelvic floor layer that would be responsible for keeping things in. So this is what would keep us continent, that would keep us from peeing or pooping ourselves, but also needs to stretch at the appropriate time. So if we're having penetrative intercourse, these muscles would need to stretch at the appropriate time, as well as releasing our bowels and bladders when we choose to. Yeah. Um, yeah. The deep layer is really responsible for kind of pelvic stability and core stability, and it actually is the floor of the core. So these are hugely okay. influential muscles that are significantly impacted with pregnancy and postpartum, but also really important to note that we can have issues with these without um, being pregnant or being postpartum. They're right. just a oh, part wow. of the mechanical system. Okay. So because of these, these are normal muscles and they contract and relax um, with normal functions, we can have the same issues with these muscles that we have with any other muscles. They can be tight, they can be spasm, they can be poorly coordinated, they can be weak, they can lack endurance. But because of what they surround and they surround um, and they're, you know, in charge of bladder and bowel mm-hmm. continence um, as well as sexual functions, mm-hmm. most of our issues with these muscles present as bowel, bladder, sexual issues. And so we think, I have a bladder, I have a bladder problem, I have a bowel problem, God, I have yes. a sexual problem, mm-hmm. but actually it's a lot of the muscles that are surrounding these that are not contracting or relaxing at the appropriate oh, time. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So then you grow a human. You grow a human. And things go left. That's right. They <laughs> yeah. get very stretched out. Yeah. 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 Well, the interesting thing is during pregnancy, they actually get kind of tighter. Really? Because hormonally... Everything around our pelvis is spreading and our body's like begging for stabilization, not to mention we have like a huge center of gravity change as we have this pregnant belly Uh that's growing and growing every day. And so our body's like, help, help, my pelvis is spreading apart. And so sometimes during pregnancy, our pelvic floor can actually get tighter and cause some issues during that as well. So... You know, there's some bad advice floating around out there during pregnancy that we need to do like 500 Kegels a day yeah. to prepare for birth. I've heard that. Yeah. Yes. yes. I don't know where that came from, but anybody who's listening, please do not do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tell us what to do. Yeah. Right. So essentially when we think about birth, the pelvic floor has like the stretch of its life, right? Yeah. So it would stretch two to three times its normal length during birth. So we want our pelvic floor to be mobile. We want it to be able to kind of relax to its max capacity when we're talking about having birth. So a Kegel contraction, which we kind of all hear about, is when we kind of draw our pelvic floor up and in. So Mm -hmm. we're kind of shortening that space, tightening that area, which is kind of exactly the opposite of what we want. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We have been told to do the absolute wrong thing. So now Emily is correcting this. (laughs) Thank you. Everybody take notes. So, and again, like Kegels are kind of like the blanket advice that we hear for like any pelvic floor dysfunction. Yeah. Anything that you could possibly ever hear. People are like, I pee myself. People are like, do Kegels. And then we don't even know what that means. A lot of doctors just throw that out. Right. And I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. Because like most people that are having issues with bladder leakage or gas control don't even do them right. So then we're just like doing bad kegels all the time, and we. So don't. then it probably makes it worse. It makes it worse, right? So I want to kind of take like one second and we talk about an appropriate kegel. Let's do it. Teach us. Okay. <laughs> Get ready, ready. All right. So we're doing I, this. I want us to think about the pelvic floor like an elevator. Okay. So our superficial layer is okay. like we're gonna shut the doors, right? Okay. So we okay. get a squeeze, and then our deep layer is a lift. So we get a okay. squeeze and a lift. We come all the way up. And then it's most important that we come all the way down. So some of us like just kegel at the very top and our elevator kind of gets stuck at the top. But it's just it's just as important to come all the way down and fully relax everything. So we squeeze, we lift, we come all the way back. And Everybody's how many, probably kegling right now. how many times <laughs> yeah. do we supposed to kegel? Or... So like just kind of like a normally dosed exercise, like we would not do 500 squats a day. Yeah. 
Oh, Lord, no. We would not, my legs wouldn't work. <laughs> we would not do 500 bicep curls a day. Right. So, like, we do not need to do 500 kegels a day. And I, I never recommend them, like, yeah. blanketly. Yeah. Um, because if somebody is hanging out on the tight end of the spectrum and yeah. maybe they don't have good length or they clench through their pel- pelvic floor all the time, then kegels make them worse. Okay. So wow. um, we can have issues like leaking because things are also too tight. And so if they're yeah. just kegling, they're just getting worse. So appropriately dosed, because okay. some not everybody needs strength. Some people need length. Yeah. And I would venture to say with pregnancy, particularly with first pregnancies, we need length. Yeah. Especially in the okay. third trimester. Yeah. I'm like, you should not be kegling at the red light. We should be talking about diaphragmatic breathing. We need to be doing pelvic floor stretching so that those muscles have the mobility to get out of the way. Yeah. Because really, like, it's not our pelvic floor's responsibility to push a baby out. Our uterus will do that. Yes whether we make a decision to do it or not, yeah. yeah, we have to create space. Oh, I love that. And the more space we have, the less we do. Yeah. <laughs> and see, I think that's just something that mm-hmm. we talk about mental health is a lot. We're yeah. just supposed to like know this naturally, right? right? And it's here with our pelvic floor. No one's telling you this in these OB appointments. No. no. Okay? Your friends are not honestly going to share this unless they've mm-hmm. done, yeah. they've had an issue right. yeah. and they've sought someone like you and then they right. can be a voice. But there's a lot of women out here, they just don't know. Yeah. Right. Well, and because like, you know, so many things are changing in pregnancy posturally, you know, we can have some issues here yeah. that maybe weren't there before. Yeah. And so people are like, oh, you know, sex wasn't painful before I'm pregnant and now it is. Why is it? I guess yeah. I'll just stop doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of times that, you know, that is a muscular issue. Like those muscles are tightening, they're kind of adapting and they can respond really well to treatment. Yeah. And, and it's important to kind of seek treatment during pregnancy because um, a lot of times we aren't, like, given a lot of options. And so, like, yeah. you know, a lot of the main issues we'll kind of see mm-hmm. mechanically. We see some back pain. Yeah. And that's especially yeah. with um, our moms who already have children because yeah. they don't, you know, they clock a little less couch time. We're lifting a toddler. We also don't have great core strength with our pregnant you We're know, putting belly. babies in and out of the crib yes. and all that. Yes. So, you know, we'll see some back pain, but then some pelvic girdle stuff. So some SI pain kind of goes along mm. with that back pain in the back, this area right here. But this one, um, pubic symphysis or pubic pain is also a big culprit. So we can have like two big causes of this guy. The first one is the round ligament. So the round ligament will go from the pubis to the uterus. So this is what happens when people sit for a long time, they stand up and it's like, wow, pow, lightning. <laughs> okay, so I did not have it with Will. Okay. And I had it with James, my second. Yeah. I remember I fell to the ground. Oh, it's shocking. I was like, and my husband was like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, there is lightning in my vagina right now. Yeah. And I just need it to pass. And he was like, do we need to go to the hospital? Mm-hmm. What is happening? And so I started texting my friends. I'm like, okay, why is my vagina hurting hurting, like and, like, it's lightning? And they're like, oh, yeah, I had that with mine. It'll go away. So, oh, yeah, it's this. Or, and I'm just like, I have to live like this? Right. Yeah. Well, and a lightning a lightning crutch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the street name yeah. for it. Yeah. That's yeah. what people will yeah. call it. But, you know, round ligament pain, there's some kind of easy things we can do for that. I mean, one of the easiest things that you can start doing right now to help with that is just slow your transitions. Yeah. So it's like quick sit to stands are going to be like, well, pow. Right? And that's what happened. I have a toddler, so he's probably like trying yep. to kill himself. And I'm like, yeah. up. Yep. Yeah. There you go. And even like rocking the pelvis back and forth a bit before we stand up, right? Like just getting a couple pelvic rocks. We get a couple easy stretches can really help with that. Round ligament pain is pretty benign, but Mm -hmm. it can feel terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Right? The other more like sinister cause of this um, pubic pain is pubic symphysis dysfunction. And that's this little disc here that connects kind of both sides of the pubis. So this area can really gap and spread and cause a lot of problems. And this would be more like, I can't put on my pants and stand on one leg. Stairs hurt. I go for a walk. It's hurting more as the walk goes on. And this is one of the things um, in pregnancy that I'm like, ooh, we got to be really kind of protective of this. Yeah. Because this is one of the problems that can get worse with birth and still be really debilitating postpartum. So I'm like, if we identify pubic symphysis dysfunction, we can start treating it during pregnancy, get them on the right um, exercises and external supports. And a lot of times they really benefit from like a little support belt. Oh, okay. You know, and usually people with pubic symphysis dysfunction, like, I don't want them running. Okay. Because they get a lot of shearing in yeah. this kind of Whitney's midline. a runner. Yeah. I am. So, yeah. like, you know, if they have this, I'm like, we need to talk about some other, you know, activities and doing some appropriate strengthening. Now, um, you mentioned, like, a supportive belt. What if someone used, like, KT? 
would that help at all? I would say, like, KT tape can be a little bit tricky in pregnancy. Okay. Um, we use it sometimes, but yeah. because, like, the belly literally changes shape throughout the yes. day, mm-hmm. they can be a little bit more prone to skin irritation. Okay, and, like, the pubic it. symphysis can be yeah. kind of tough just because there's hair and stuff there. Gotcha. And, yeah. you know, ripping hair off kind of hurts. Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Some wax in the yeah, making so like, there. Yeah, yeah, there you go. We'll yeah. try it, but I don't throw, my, like, all my eggs in that basket. Got it. Sometimes because if you – if they sweat and the tape gets wet, you know, they can yeah. get a little bit more irritated. Just different people's skin tolerate different things Got differently. It. And so okay. sometimes having like a kind of reusable belt that they can use yes. to kind of give a little and bit. And adjust as needed throughout the day. Yep. And throughout the pregnancy can be helpful. Um, the other kind of important thing to note about pubic symphysis dysfunction is a lot of times it kind of will be blown off as round ligament pain. They can be, like, difficult can okay. to differentiate. Yeah. Yeah. And so I would say if you're getting round ligament pain, you feel better as you get moving. Okay. You may have so that initial in pain. So warms up. Like exactly. So you're, like, kind of. It kind of stretches going. out. It's that initial quick stretch gives you that pain, okay. and then it kind of gets Eases. it gets moving, okay. and it feels better. Pubic symphysis typically gets worse. Okay. So it's okay. like, I didn't have any pain when I started walking, and now I'm at the end of my walk, and it's and I'm getting more and yeah. more pubic pain. And I think an interesting thing to note about this is that, you know, most of us in the U.S. deliver on our back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that actually gives us the most gapping of this area. Oh, wow. So if we're actually, you know, already having an issue with this area kind of excessively separating or being unstable, delivering on our back is the worst position that we can. Wow. For those mamas, would you recommend... Yep. Or, okay, so either like a sideline, either sideline, okay, or an all four delivery is more protective Got to it. the pubic symphysis and would reduce kind of maybe some postpartum um, complications so, yeah. that we could we could have with that. Got so it. and those respond round ligament pain, pubic symphysis pain, back pain, SI pain, all respond great to physical therapy. Mm-hmm. And you're kind of limited on your tools in pregnancy because yeah. yeah. like we can't take Advil and we. Yeah. and get injections yeah. and yep. things are kind no of sh- <laughs> stripped away yeah. Yeah. and so like physical therapy is like a great way to manage your pain yeah. and as well as maintain your strength throughout yeah. your pregnancy so if we can like maintain strength maintain yeah. fitness modified exercises then that just you know puts lots of deposits in the bank for a better um postpartum recovery okay i think it's important That's to awesome. say is mm-hmm. like you can t- ask your provider yeah. Yeah. and say, I need to deliver this way. I'm going to try this mm-hmm. way. Yeah. You know, I need this opportunity. You can advocate yeah. for yourself. Mm-hmm. A lot of your OBs, your midwives, your doulas, mm-hmm. they may not be well-versed on the pelvic floor, mm-hmm. on PT, on what mm-hmm. you need. Yeah. So you can ask for referrals. You can go to your insurance and say, can you self-refer or do you need a referral? Yeah. In, in the state of Alabama, we can evaluate, but we have to have a referral for like a, a plan of care but most OBs are like cool you want to do that no yeah. problem yeah in most other states you can walk right through the door and just get treated so kind of just check with your insurance ladies yeah. check mm-hmm. um with your state to mm-hmm. see what's going on and having a you know OBs love them this is not their wheelhouse right I mean because these are just mechanical issues and yeah. a lot of times you know of course like bodies are changing right yeah. so even if you're doing exercise and things before but now you're like uh i don't know what to do with this belly i'll just walk yeah you know but like resistance training is important during pregnancy i mean it helps mm. keep us strong having that yeah. muscular stability is really crucial to make you kind of feel good and especially for you know caring for other kids or yeah. dogs or whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah all and, the things and so but do. a lot of people don't you know just don't know how to change their exercise to accommodate yeah. for pregnancy and so they're just like well i'll just walk and i'm like no we still need strengthening you know yeah, yeah. Well, exercise is very specific and walking is not necessarily going to give us all we need to kind of keep our bodies strong yeah. Yeah. when during pregnancy do you see most people come to you do you think there's a lot like is that third trimester or second trimester or and then I guess another flip on that is when should they start reaching yeah. out to you right so um I mean any kind of you're a little more limited in the interventions that you can do during the first trimester yeah mm-hmm. plus like people feel bad and so yeah it's, and, and most of the time activity levels are not that high yeah. during the first trimester yeah, yeah. Can barely lift their head off the couch yeah. yeah so like most of the problems start to present in the second trimester mm-hmm. um oh yeah or that the wave third. of energy comes in and yeah it starts to you win. start moving you get off the couch or leave and, the toilet and, and that's yeah. when we have more of a significant change in regards to kind of posture and we're starting to get a baby yeah. bump and moving mm-hmm. around that yeah. as well and so i would say anytime a mechanical problem 
presents, you can start, right? So if you start getting back pain at 14 weeks, we have people start therapy then. Some people yeah. may not start till 30, okay. right? Because they didn't start having pain until um, their third trimester. As far as kind of like preparation for birth, yeah. right? Because we think that birth is just like this intuitive thing that we know how to do. But yeah. it's really like a mechanical process that yeah. we could really benefit from some better mechanics and positioning options yes. and yeah, things absolutely. like that. Yeah, absolutely. So we offer some birth prep as well, right, that usually starts about 35 weeks. And yeah. what's some of the things that we can tell our listeners that's practical for them? Yeah. Because um, they may not be able to find, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. a great resource like you. Yeah. So I guess what is a couple of things they can do? So as long as you're cleared by your provider, um, and most people are, as long as they're still kind of cleared for intercourse because yeah. it's more gentle than that. Um, I usually recommend starting perineal massage at like 35 weeks. And so that can involve um, a finger in the vagina, stretching those tissues in all directions. We have to think about, you know, that those, that area is going to have a 360 stretch yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. with a baby's head. And um, our muscles were beautifully designed to be able to stretch that a yeah. lot more so than other areas in our body. But it's nice if the first stretch doesn't occur with a baby's head. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can yeah. start stretching. I didn't experience that, but that frightens me even yeah. just speaking of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if we can start stretching that area and it's not something you have to do like every day even every other day is beneficial okay. and just there's lots of videos that we can link to this okay. as well but just kind of stretching like one finger in the vagina just kind of stretching that area like we're going to widen that space side mm -hmm. to side and down towards the rectum is where it's going to get a lot of stretching okay I also recommend that people are kind of educated on different laboring positions because there's good benefit in yes. changing positions. Mm -hmm. The more we're changing positions in labor, the more we're opening and creating yeah. space for our baby to want to be in a better position. Yeah. So y'all would definitely recommend the peanut ball then. We recommend the peanut ball. I usually show I people stuff. Yep. In standing and sitting mm -hmm. in quadruped or kind of all fours or yeah. kind of leaned over mm -hmm. um, and then positions that they can also do if they choose to get an epidural yeah because like we think you know oh once i get the epidural i'm just gonna nap and then they're gonna come in and i'm gonna tell me no. i'm tens no of that did not happen for me <laughs> yeah no but i am team epidural let me just say i yeah. loved my epidurals but i did not sleep with my epidural yeah so i mean but there's yeah. still good benefit to changing yeah. position oh, yeah. and like moving from side to side and mm -hmm. moving the peanut around and there's yeah. tons of um resources out there as far as like different positions and yeah. and we're wanting to kind of change those every three to five yeah. contractions yeah which probably seems like a little more frequent than we would expect oh, i remember my nurse was like flipping like right seemed. and it was great because yeah. again i didn't have bad deliveries at all right yeah and so and then and she did the tug of war thing too yeah that was super helpful with my first to get her underneath my pelvic bone right yeah but if you don't have that type of nurse she yeah. was gold let then, me tell you i'll sing her praises well, all day and long. i think the assumption is a lot of times like oh they're gonna tell me what to do right and i'm like you can't always. assume that they're not yeah, all not created always. equal they're not and and you know that's where like having a doula can be really helpful Absolutely. yeah because they can support and direct your your birth and your positioning i also think it's just helpful if people have things to focus on that are not like the start and the end of birth yeah, yeah. it's like i have things to do and stuff to work on and positions and again yes we have tasks that we can do to help create space yeah, yeah. and if we have space then babies want to do what they yeah. want to do and so offering that variety and and shifting through our pelvis is yeah helpful absolutely um the other thing we focus on is appropriate breathing okay right so like in the hospital we're taught like one kind of push one two three hold your breath and push and everybody's yeah. purple in the face yeah <laughs> right? yeah but i like for people to kind of feel equipped with different tools and like can we try um more of a a gentler push where we learn to kind of distend through our pelvic floor so again like most everybody is kind of familiar at least with the word of kegling some people are like i think i'm doing it i think i'm not right. doing it but going the other way and like actively bearing down through our pelvic floor is a weird motor skill yeah. <laughs> okay yeah right yeah the way we're like opening the holes yeah right yeah. like most that, of us don't like i'm trying to yeah i know i'm right trying to do now. it right now yeah. yeah so like i usually and i want to i'm going to try to teach people how to do that while they are not holding their breath so I like a I like to kind of cue like a what I like to call like a big belly hard belly breathing. Okay. So if they like have their hands on their belly and they take a big breath, they fill their belly up. Now can they like exhale and push their belly out more? There you that's go. offset. It's opposite, right? Yeah, I was about to say I'm that's, having to really yeah. put some mental effort yeah. into that. Yeah. And so, but I like that cue because like if you have an epidural, you can't feel anything down there. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. But you can have your hands on your belly yeah. and know that if I'm exhaling and my baby's headed back up towards my spine, I'm probably contracting my pelvic floor and it's moving in the opposite uh, way. That. Okay, so I worked in L and D for several years and I cannot tell you the amount of patients that said I would push it and then next thing I know, baby just comes mm-hmm. right back up. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, that explains so much. So and I can tell them so like much. you can have your hands below your belly button. And you can feel your belly fill yeah. up with that yeah. good deep diaphragmatic breath and then like keep it there and like get, you know, kind of like push out against your hands as you're exhaling yep. gives you that pelvic floor distension. Mm-hmm. So then instead of our babies trying to descend and we're contracting all these muscles, yeah. our baby's descending and we're opening. We're pushing them out. And it's oh really like a yeah, light bulb moment over right? here. Y'all. And this is why we need to learn this now because yeah. when you're in pain, people are yelling at you over you, not yelling, but like push, push. Yeah. You're just like, I'm at my wits' end. It's a little end. chaotic during the l You need to know stage. it. Well, and if you can't feel it, we need strategies of, like, yes. some other type of – and also watching. You know, not everybody's down to watch either. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and also, like, what are we looking at? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. The whole area looks unreliable. Yeah. You know? Yes. But, like, having a tactile cue of somewhere somebody can touch that you can feel, that you can push out against, yeah. it's helpful. And, and practicing those strategies when we aren't in labor. And calmish. Yeah. Yes. So you're like, all right, I know how to descend. And I would say nine out of 10, if I'm like watching a pelvic floor and trying to get a mom to learn how to move in that direction, nine out of 10 respond with shoot the tampon out. <laughs> so if I'm like, okay, move, like you're going to shoot it. a tampon out. They're like, got it. Oh, I got that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That makes so much sense. It makes sense. Right? And so it's that same yeah. motion of like, if you're yeah. going to like shoot a tampon out that we're kind of looking for, for our that's where our pelvic floor is kind of most coordinated. So with do you have a question? Like, I'm just piggybacking off of this right now. And so with those mamas who felt like they pushed and then baby just came right back up, and that mm-hmm. happens for an extended period, have you seen either more third and fourth degree episiotomies mm-hmm. with situations like that? And I've had several moms say that, you know, eventually their cervix is swollen, mm-hmm. so then they would end up with a C-section. Do you feel like there's, like, a connection? Between that tightening and baby coming back up and those kind of outcomes. Well, you know, um, maternal research is really poorly funded. Yeah. This, yes, is a, yes. concur. this is a sec- secondary soapbox, yes, right? It is. So, like, we're not getting good research. You're listening about out this. there to us funding They places? are not funding it, Thank and, you. which is ridiculous because we have an ample, never ending patient population right. that we could fund and draw yes. research Job from. Security people. But we aren't, um, which is really frustrating. Yeah. Yes. I would say anecdotally, from my experiences of seeing women when they're pregnant and when they're postpartum, mm-hmm. when they have good mobility and a good pushing strategy, yeah. where everybody is like rowing in the same direction, yeah. they tend to tear significantly less. They tend to okay. push for far less time, mm-hmm. and we know that those two factors of like yeah. pushing for a really long time could cause more of the prolapse issues yeah. postpartum. Also, like. If we're pushing for a really long time, baby starts to get distressed. That okay. increases our likelihood of an instrument-assisted delivery. So vacuum yeah. or forceps, which are directly related to more extensive oh, tearing. How could it not be? Yeah, mm-hmm. and and sometimes I wonder, like, is it just that there wasn't the mobility, like, yeah. in the yeah. tissues? Like, did they have a tight pelvic floor maybe even before they got pregnant? Yeah. And then, like, they, you know, were just everything was moving in the a way that was yeah. kind of combating yeah. what wanted to naturally happen. So... I would say, in my opinion, and again, I don't have, like, the research that I want to back this up because it's poorly funded. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throwing this hints in. But, but I feel like if we had better mobility, mm-hmm. if we utilized different positions that yes. actually helped open the pelvis mechanically, um, like, would outcomes be better? Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like from a lot of our moms that we treat that we do this, we're like, man, birth outcomes are better. Like, first-time moms having only yes. grade one or small yeah. grade two and Mm -hmm. pushing for less than 45 minutes. I was going to say, what to you is an extended amount of time to be pushing? I would say greater than two hours. Okay. That's about right with the hospital. And that's exhausting. Yeah. It is. And And I tell people, too, I'm like, this breathing while you push, you're kind of, this is kind of like breathing the baby down. Yeah. Right? It's energy saving. 
if we start our pushing process with a 10 out of 10 full pressure push, yeah. that's hard yourself. to yeah. ma- maintain you for two hours. Can't it. So if we can start with like a gentler version where we're like breathing and we're circulating yeah. good oxygen, we're kind of like breathing the baby down and creating space. Yeah. Then at the very end, when like we need to get that baby yeah. under the pubis, we have gas in the tank to yeah. do it. To do we it. got it. We haven't already been using and 10 can... out of 10 pushes for 90 minutes. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, don't start the marathon out at your quickest pace. Like you want to right. finish the race. Work smarter, not harder, ladies. Absolutely. We got to learn that early. Right. And just, again, like, yeah. I feel like a lot of people are open to stuff if you ask. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's like. Well, if they know it's an option. Right. And so like, you know, I'll be like, you know, ask if you can start inside yeah. lying which you can do that with yeah. an epidural yeah. yeah or like if you you know ask if you can start in all fours because yeah. like sometimes if um you know they still have good movement in their legs that yeah. you know they'll be like okay yeah but like yeah. if you're on your back and the baby's like you know headed towards the pubis they're gonna be like that's not a great time well, and I can yeah. Change yeah. Yeah. yeah with my first i remember we were doing tug of war and that's when i started the pushing mm-hmm. phase mm-hmm. and that was so nice to have that leverage mm-hmm. to pull up and not be just like flat on my back Mm -hmm. during that pushing Mm -hmm. stage and then it's like once she got out from under that pelvic bone like i mean it was like sister is coming yeah well and that's and that's you know we expect that to be intuitive but also like when we're on our back you know we're laying on our tailbone we're laying Mm -hmm. on our sacrum and those are spaces that should have you know, at least 18 degrees to move out of the way. Yeah. yeah. But then we're just laying on them. Yeah. So then we're not taking advantage of any kind of backwards motion that yeah. we could have. And so even pop- popping like a little towel roll under your your sacrum or mm-hmm. a, um, a noodle, like a swim noodle, mm-hmm. a little piece of one, okay. then it kind of allows that pelvis to kind of come like this. So then oh, we're okay. not just laying on all these tissues. They have room to stretch this way. So I love that. So would you that. say like if someone in a hospital bed mm-hmm. and they start out on their back and all the things and then they start like actively pushing and they're almost in like semi upright, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. somewhat seated position. So like they have an angle to mm-hmm. them. Is that more ideal of a pushing as opposed to just like playing? Does that provide? I mean, I would think about? so. Yeah. Because I feel like that's what they did with my second daughter. Yeah. I because being, and like, of course, like, that's a little uh, bit more gravity assisted as well. Yeah. So like gravity is going to help. I was still in the hospital bed, technically on my back in a sense. Yeah. But I remember like I wasn't like laying down. Does yeah. that make sense? For sure. I yeah. think there's a lot here that it boils down to. You got to educate yourself. We're here to do that for you guys. Yeah. Empower yourself. Mm-hmm. Know to speak up. Yep. Mm-hmm. And do what's best for your body and baby. Now, baby distress, you know, you, yeah. you, there's a lot of things. I was about to say, we can't handle we the can't, abnormalities. You know, like but if things are in your control and you can advocate, mm-hmm. yeah, And I would it. also say that there's just things you can do to prepare. Yeah. You know, like that we aren't just like hitting a run with never having stretched. We exactly. would we would train for a marathon. We would yes. train for a race. Do the it's same the thing same for kind labor. Of physical Absolutely. preparation and doing um, spinning babies has excellent. Okay, they, they are free, fantastic. You know, they have free exercises that you can access on their website. To we'll help link with, that, ladies. With the help with baby positioning uh, and to help with hip mobility and yeah. back mobility, so that you you have the range in your body and you can work on all that stuff yeah. with your pregnant. And you can work on your pelvic floor mobility and you can work yeah. on these breathing strategies. So that way we aren't like trial and erroring when we're in extreme pain during labor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when it's, it's game time. Yeah. When it's game time. I mean, because, you know, an athlete's not going to go mm-hmm. yeah. to his race or his game yeah. and never done anything well, before. And I think like some of the birth education classes out there, I mean, they talk a lot about what birth is and the yeah. process of it, but not like how to do it. I feel like no one and nobody taught t- me any of this. And nobody talks about like, they have stuff in your room, like a ball or maybe a peanut, but not yeah. like how to use them or which yeah. positions you could use them. They're just like, you want to bounce on that? Yeah. yeah, I guess. You're like, sure, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think we have like a long way to go as far as like educating, Agreed. birthing people on like, like physical preparation that you can yes. do for your body that can, you know, that can help help with better outcomes and make pregnancy more comfortable because it doesn't just have to be this thing that we suffered through and your baby's going to come out and it's going to be better and there is some expectation that some mechanical problems you know may get better I mean may get worse as the pregnancy progresses and that may be the case but that's not always the case and sometimes they have to resolve and they can exercise better and they can feel better and there's there's options out there and a lot of times they're not always offered but you can advocate and you can ask for them Finally, what for our C-section mommies? Because I had no choice. I was C-section for both. I knew that. Was there anything I should have done in pregnancy to prepare, to help? Well, again, like Spinning Babies has exercises on their website for breech babies. 
Mine weren't breached. They mm-hmm. just, I had no choice. I had placenta issues. Right. Previa invasive. So, and then accreta. So, th- I couldn't get it out. So, but right. I always felt like mm-hmm. it was a major abdominal surgery that no one, they're like, well, you just want to recover it from it. So, I didn't know what to prepare for. Well, and I would say, like, if you know you're going to have a C-section beforehand, again, like, working on hip mobility, working on back mobility, making sure, like, all those tissues are nice and yeah. abdominal walls kind of out <laughs> yeah yeah and like having the appropriate tools at your disposal immediately mm-hmm. postpartum and what should that's good th- that's a good note what should we have like tools right like is for it, postpartum recovery uh-huh with their c-section what would you t- pack i mean is there anything you can pack in a bag that these moms who maybe they're fixing to pack their bag that you're like yes. this is going to help you yeah. Well, I, w- I usually recommend, like, if they end up having a C-section, I tell them to, like, ask for an abdominal binder in the hospital. Okay, so yes, I put that. I huge... had a great nurse, and she's like, you need this. Mm-hmm. I didn't know I needed it until mm-hmm. she told me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, again, controlling that swelling makes it a lot more comfortable. As well as that compression feels good and makes your trunk feel more Well, because supported. I remember I stood up, and it went boop. Yep. And I was like, oh, boy, my organs are, like, at my feet. That's how it felt. Yeah, right. I remember and that- with both my children, first time I stood up post delivery, I was like, "Oh, my insides are just going to fall out of my vagina." Yeah, and I was like, "They are just all going to." Yeah, again, did not have yeah. bad traumatic deliveries, but I was like, "Oh, oh, I don't need my intestines to leave me. Like, you got to stay in. You got to stay in." Would you think the hospital should give this to the ladies, or should they put it in their bag, or like go on Amazon and find I mean, one? The hospital should have them. Okay, like, they, so they might have one. to dig them up. Okay, <laughs> but I usually recommend like. Because, you know, belly changes a lot during yeah. the first two weeks postpartum. And so I usually recommend that um, that they get the hospital one. There's a little more Velcro, a little bit more adaptability for when you're kind of rapidly yeah. changing size. And then when you get home, I like the sea panty. Okay. So it's like a compressive pair of panties that you can wear. And it offers compression to the perineum and the abdominal wall. Oh, and it has nice. a little strip for... Um, a, like a silicone scar strip for shipping time ladies if you think wow. you're gonna have a c-section yep. go ahead and look that up and i would say okay. um like a, a good ice pack and this holds true for both vaginal and cesarean birth, okay but like the gel ice packs not gel like ice just pack. corner okay. peas yeah <laughs> yeah gel ice packs okay. that are actually gonna be colder um a postpartum recovery legging or short are yeah. hugely helpful okay um as well so having that before you need it is always a good thing yes right. be prepared yeah but you know, if you don't know you're going to have a cesarean birth and you go in and have one, we then have Amazon. You, yeah, Amazon, <laughs> We get especially in Birmingham, order it's while, right down the road. That's right. Order it while you're in the hospital and we'll be on your doorstep when you get I home. totally did that, Darren. Uh, um, but I yes. was like, oh, actually, I need this and these because yeah. you're up feeding anyways, right? right. So what you do know. we do? We shop. Yeah. But um, exactly. yeah. well, 2 a.m. purchases. That's right. Oh, I know. Well, Emily, we're going to bring you back and you're going to tell us all about postpartum because I think what we can take away from this, ladies, is we're going to link a lot of resources your Instagram, your business is Instagram, we'll do the Spin and Sisters. If you cannot find a local pelvic floor therapist that you can educate yourself, mm-hmm. um, Instagram, the internet, YouTube's yes. great. Mm-hmm. Knowing to advocate yourself, mm-hmm. how you can do different positions, mm-hmm. and start early. If you're noticing the pains, you don't have to live with it. Yeah. Ask to see someone. Yeah. So you can never go wrong with asking. Mm-hmm. and referral absolutely and figuring out how to advocate for yourself but we appreciate you so much yay thank you for having me it's a pleasure all right till next all right. time see y'all